that moment when you realize you have mastered your wellness. When you become so resilient, you can conquer any hiccup life throws you. Yeah, well, me either. But I still ride unicorns. I'll teach you how to become a mindset master. You will learn how your habits and behavior affect your success in nutrition, exercise, relationships, organization, and so much more. It's your reality, and you need to do it your way. Self-care and self-love are anything but selfish. Take charge. Get excited. If not now, then when? Grab your espresso and get ready to talk all things wellness. It's time for Coach Couch and Coffee Radio with Coach Peggy Wong right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Coach Couch and Coffee Radio here on Transformation Talk Radio. It is going to be a special show today. I'm so excited. I'm here every Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. As you know, we sit here and we talk about anything goes. And I am so excited about my guest today. This topic is Rebel with a Cause, Just Because. I'm telling you, have you guys ever heard? You've probably been a rebel. All two-year-olds are rebels, right? So you've either known a rebel or you've, you know, you've tried to talk to them about certain suggestions, where you want to go eat, you know, whatever. And they buck you on everything. Welcome to my profession. (laughs) Everybody bucks me on everything. But I want to talk to you today about being a rebel might just be like who you are. We're going to talk about that. Or you might be a rebel just with wellness. You know, you try to self-sabotage or set yourself up for failure. So today we are going to talk to one of my very, very favorite rebel clients. Took me about a year probably to convince her that she was a true rebel. You guys are going to love her. She is here. Welcome Elaine Clark. Thanks, Peggy. Oh, excited for you. Did you bring your, your mug? You know, I always bring a unicorn mug. What did you bring today? And what's well, in it? I am not drinking coffee for this program. I am having tea, so I'm in a tea mug. Oh, a little, little tea mug with a tree oh, on it. That's so yeah. cute. I know. It's so funny that this show is called, you know, Coach Couch and Coffee or Coffee Time. And half the time, because it's 6 Eastern... I used to be really cool. Like I could do the coffee thing anytime. And so like midnight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And now I'm like, oh my God, only half decaf after one. (laughs) (laughs) So so are you excited to be on here and just share our love for each other? I mean, sure. Our our love hate relationship we've had for the last few years. Yeah. And and you started off by saying that you've convinced me that I'm a rebel, but I mean, you know, we'll see. I haven't. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think. You're rebelling against that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that's awesome. Let's let's start in the beginning because we're definitely going to explain to everybody like what even is a rebel because we have, I have four tendencies that I use with my clients that is off of Gretchen Rubin's work. So I I do want to eventually get there. But I think it would be very helpful if we explained to everybody how we even met in this universe, how we were brought together. I think you were forced, but let's hear your side of the story. How did we meet? Yeah. So my brother, um, you were coaching my brother, and he had a lot of success with his weight loss, and he wanted to help me. And... um, he wanted to send me to a boot camp and I, he said, absolutely not. <laughs> and so then he came back and he said, well, my coach does these series and no, actually I think he put Catherine, his, his wife. Um, yeah. Who's very sweet. So she was, Oh, you know, it's really good. And you need to do this series and it's really, it's going to be so helpful and I'm going to pay for it. And, you know, it's not that long and you, you know, you don't, you just have to just try it out. So I was like, I don't have any excuses. Like I was trying to find one and I couldn't find one. So I was like, okay, it's free. It's easy. It's Facebook. It's at home. I'm out of excuses. So, so I tried it. Yes. I, oh, 
You know, I'll never forget you, even if I didn't talk to you after today. You're just one of those profound. And I think everybody who's ever been in a series with you or a retreat that you have come to, it you're hysterical. I mean, you know you're funny, right? Of course you. Well, I I mean, it's it's always off putting when someone says you're funny, and then you're sort of in this (laughs) position where you have to be funny. But I mean, I just I use humor a lot. I think it's um, sort of a tool for me. Um, I deflect tension with it. I deflect awkwardness with it, you know, whatever. That's I just, That's um, and I just really enjoy having a good time. So if you can laugh about something, you're going to enjoy it a lot more. So Yeah, exactly. No, that's a really good point. I hadn't really thought of it that way. So before we get into any of the descriptions of what we're talking about, as far as being a rebel and how it connects with wellness and all of the fun stories we have. Would you consider looking back before we met, you knew what a rebel was, that you were somewhat of a rebel? Because I mean, even your bio itself for the show was cracking me up. Yeah, I I mean, I guess I don't think I ever used that word, but right. I don't think I ever would have said, no, I'm a rule follower. I do what I'm supposed to do when I'm supposed to do it. No, right. I'm not. But I'm also not like, I don't like to break laws. I don't like to get caught doing things I shouldn't do. So to an extent, I might buck the label saying I'm not a real rebel. I'm just like a rebel everywhere I can get away with it, maybe. And like not get myself into too much trouble. But I do like making my own my own decision by doing things my way. Can you pinpoint how far back that goes? Like what's your birth um, order? So explain explain the sibling order here. Okay, so my three brothers are seven, eleven, and thirteen years older than me. So I was um, a surprise baby, and um, my parents were tired, so um, I got to really be a rebel and enjoy it pretty much. Um, I, you know, I, my dad and I butted heads a lot because he was used to being, you know, the authoritarian in the family. And my mom was like, you know, she's just a little girl and da da da. And so I was able to sort of get away with a lot of things my brothers weren't. Yeah. But I, um, I definitely had it easier in the family. And um, I mean, we had a, a thing, speaking of being a rebel, we had a, a mantra that went from my second oldest, my third oldest brother, and then me to the next sibling up was always, you're not the boss of me. I mean, it, we said it all the time. You're not the boss of me. You're not the boss of me. You're not the boss of me. You know, and of course they were usually in a position where they were the boss because they were babysitting or something, but you know, we weren't going to have that. So. Oh boy. I can need to sell that t-shirt. That's a good one. Like <laughs> Clark underneath it. We could make some good money off that. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> so before we started working together, if we start, let's start with the wellness thing. So what was your goal when you, we started with this series? That's just to let everybody know that's how we started. So virtual series, there were about 12 women in the group. Um, Elaine came along. It's a virtual series. So she could be at home, you know, hanging out, whatever, in her PJ. So she was out of excuses. And you came along into this series, what would you say your thought was coming into it? Because share with us what your previous wellness journeys maybe were and what your thought was as a goal coming in. What were you thinking? Well, I would say I had absolutely no idea what to expect. I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't know, I didn't know what, how you were going to be, what requirements, what constraints. I had no idea. So um, that's not a comfortable place to be, but um, I I dove right in. And I I mean, my number one goal was lose weight. I mean, that's what it's always been, lose weight. And it's not that I don't intellectually associate losing weight with being healthier and, you know, living longer and, you know, being more fit and not carrying so much weight around will make you feel better and all of that. But um, it was always about the number. You know, always about how much, yeah. yeah, how much weight can I lose? So, yeah. so when I, when we started the series, I thought, okay, so here we are, you know, day one and we're gonna, um, she's going to tell me what I need to do 
and that's going to be the recipe for losing weight. So we started the series and you said, okay, now everybody close their eyes. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> and I was, okay. So I'm closing my eyes and you're like, imagine that you are someone that doesn't have any arms or doesn't have any legs. And you went through this whole big imaginary scene, which I am not good at at all. And it was, of course, it was to, you know, sort of appreciate what you have and realize that you have to work around some obstacles, even if they're not that severe. And all, I got the lesson, you know, right. but um, of course, then I, every time we had a meeting, <laughs> you're close your eyes and like, oh my God, you know, can we do, can we just like tell story? Like I'll tell a story. Let me right. tell a story to start. But, right. No, oh, my yeah, face so, is going to hurt after this show because yeah, so I had awesome. no idea that it was going to be like that. And um, but it was fun. I had a good I mean, it was fun and I hated it. All well, not that. really. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, you were the, the great thing about the series were, I mean, you always participated. hundred percent. You were always there. You had great input. You weren't, you know, passive. You were a good team player. Whether behind the scenes you were completing tasks fully or not, because they all folded out, unfolded. But you never came across as somebody who was derogatory in the sense of, you know, I don't want to do this. I mean, you were transparent to a certain point, but it wasn't like you ever brought the team down. That's why I enjoyed so much working with you, because you do have a sense of humor and you did tackle any of the commitments that we had as best you could in the moment. But it was the behind the scenes stuff. I mean, I remember some of the stories. And it's just from doing this so long that I could guess what your next steps would be. But I would say things to you and you're like, oh, my God, do you have cameras in my house? And you would say to Shannon, I know she has cameras. And, and it just got to be so much fun with being one or two steps ahead of you that I just because I just knew where you were going to and the emails behind the scenes. So you guys for series, what we do is that you do we do have the virtual series and we use Zoom. So everybody is up and on the screen like the Brady Bunch. And then I always have a private Facebook site in addition so that the group, that's where we post, you know, recaps or challenges, motivation, stuff like that. So we get to go off road and communicate there for six to eight weeks. And that's where the party starts. And then Elaine and I have even a deeper relationship because then comes the email exchanges, which we're going to go into. They are lengthy. I mean, I, I have had clients say, look, keep your emails to like two sentences. That's all I've got time for. And I'm sending them, you know, four page emails, like, and then we did this. And then that's why this happened. And there, I don't want all that. Are you, can you do it? Can you not do it? Why done? You know? Um, so I really have tried to rein that in at work, but when I get started, I just go on and on and on. And then here you come like a minute and a half later, you've sent me like four page email back. And I'm like, are you saying voice recognition? I mean, <laughs> how are you doing? You know, and I'm sitting there reading and reading and reading. And I'm like, well, now let me tell you. And back I go. So yeah. So you are like probably the person in my life that has written the most to me in in a single email, like the longest emails. No, nope, everybody else is boop, 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 you know. But and yeah, we have like words of affirmation. Love language comes into play because it's like, and you're going to listen to me, girl. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it was great. Exactly. You guys, Elaine was sending me some of her um, emails, some of the emails we've had back and forth, and I haven't read them for a long time. And we've been working together off and on for almost two years. And I was reading them just in tears. And I'm going to actually read a couple of excerpts out of them here and you you know, in just a minute, but I want to, so I want to come back around to the goals being kind of like the scale or losing weight. So you had done the typical, I mean, the slim fasts or the, tell me some of the journeys that you've been on the weight watchers or what, cause I want, I don't want people to slim fast was great. Slim fast to me was like, Oh, this is perfect because I get up in the morning and I have a slim fast. And then at lunch I have a slim fast and I just don't think about food yeah. and then dinner comes, you know, but I did pretty good with that because once you get that far through your day, you're going to try to be a little better what you do from, you know, four o'clock till 10 o'clock. Right. So I did that a few times. I did Weight Watchers, which is a very healthy, balanced 
reasonable way to structure yeah. your eating habits. So that worked very well. And I did aerobics. Um, this was, well, we're going back to the eighties. And, um, so I did the whole, you know, let's get physical. You know, I did the whole eighties <laughs> aerobics. I had like shiny leotards, those, um, yeah, like a leotard and then leggings. Oh yeah. But I always thought I was chubby. So I'd put these like athletic shorts over top. And I thought that made oh, it better. Gosh. So leg warmers, high top yeah. shoes. Yeah. Couple colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you did, those are basically um, my go-tos back then. And, okay. um, you know, I started off with low fat. Then everybody said low carb. So I just, yeah. whatever the new thing was, I, I did. So And exercise, was, was that, that wasn't one of your favorites or it was? No, I don't like exercising. Yeah, that's what I don't. I, I don't like exercising say. if it's exercising for the sake of exercising. Correct. So aerobics for me was good because, you know, do this for, you know, four sets of eight and then you're switching yeah. and then do something else and you're switching. And, you and love you're music. going with the music. Yeah, you're going yeah. with the music and you yeah. get, okay, and we've done enough of this one and boom, it's the next song. Oh, yeah. this is a different, oh, we're going to do this now and that. So that kept me really um, focused on, and I'm not real um, graceful. So I'm rather clumsy. So doing aerobics makes me focus on what I'm physically able to accomplish right. without breaking my neck. So the time just went by really fast. So I, I loved it. I really, I really still enjoy that a lot. You do. You're, you've had, yeah. you've had some assignments and having some dance parties at home and they've been quite delightful. Those videos. Right. <laughs> yeah. I still have access to those. Okay. So let's talk about this. You guys, one of the assignments early, early, whenever I start working with somebody initially, I have them take a test to figure out their love languages, they figure out their sleep, their chronotype, their biorhythm. So either I've got videos out there, some shows out there, you can get onto three wellness pillars.com or on my YouTube and see what I'm talking about when I say Elaine is a bear. So we're not going to go too deeply into this show on being a bear, but I can tell you that Elaine, is, <laughs> she isn't. I mean, to the point, bear. She likes to frolic and she loves friends and socialize around laughter and food and naps. And wouldn't you say, Elaine, you're just a, just like a mama bear. Little yeah. Bear cub. Okay. So then when we get to working together, I don't know, second or third time together, I try to figure out what habit following approach that clients have. So again, as I mentioned earlier in the show, Gretchen Rubin has lots of books out there, but the four tendencies, she goes into trying to figure out your feelings towards habits, your approaches, how you follow habits. And then that, I determined without letting Elaine know that she was a rebel way before she was willing to admit that she was a rebel. So the first thing that we figured out is we always say when it comes to habits, do you get bored or not get bored? And Elaine, you were a get bored. Right. Right. So when it comes to food, you get bored. When it comes to exercise, you kind of get bored. So it needs to change pretty frequently. For how often, I mean, how just, is it five days with food and you're like onto something? Is it five hours or just opposite of whatever I say or I mean um yeah I, I mean I think well, there was another thing that we learned in your series which was about what kind of eater you are some people are habitual eaters yeah. I forget what the other types were but I was like the passionate eater yeah. so and I mean I was I was just talking about this the other day I was you know I want something to eat I mean I'm hungry when I I know I'm physically hungry and I'm like, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I, like, I don't want anything that I have. And I was like, I, I should be eating what I really, really want. And that's a bad habit that I got into was just eating what was there. And I didn't even enjoy it. So, yeah. um, so that was a big part of it. But um, getting bored is, I think, linked to that. Because, yeah. you know, I can only eat so many, you know, egg white omelets with spinach and mushrooms, you know, I need point. something going on there. So, um, so I was always constantly looking for new recipes, just searching for something different to yeah. eat that was healthy, you know? 
And so the good thing about not being bored, because some people get bored with food and then they don't get bored with exercise. So you have to kind of be, you know, some people can just get on the treadmill every day, which just shoot you because you just, you'd rather do something uh-huh. that's fun. I mean, food, you know? food, I get a little bored with. Exercise, it's torture. It's torture. torture. You put me on a treadmill and I, I'm just like, how many more steps? How yeah. many? Step, 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 yeah. step. Walking, 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 walk. I hate it. Yes. Put me in the woods hiking. Yes. And I like walking. But Love on the treadmill, I go crazy. Absolutely. So, yeah. And then the next step to that is we figured out you were a baby stepper, right? Because we want to look at the approaches, like how somebody dives into a, a habit, trying to embed a healthy habit. So there's fresh starters and there's baby steppers. So fresh starters typically go, oh, I want to run a 5K or whatever, and they sign up tomorrow without kind of thinking things through. And baby steppers can be great and kind of ticking along and doing a good job if we can get them started. So baby right. stepper, right? I think, yeah, I think I have the fresh starter idea in my head. And then I have a hard time on that <laughs> first little baby step. So I always, I always struggled with where do I fall in this? Because I think I'm the person who goes, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the gym this many times. And I'm starting on Monday because I always start on Monday, right? You have right. to start on Monday. Of course. And, um, yeah. And so I, I, uh, uh, but in my head, I'm thinking like it's, I'm going to be huge. This is going to be wonderful. It's going to be this major transformation in my life. And Honey then Monday baby. comes and I'm like, don't feel like it today. There's always another Monday. Or maybe, maybe this week I'll try it on a Tuesday. Right? right, because you don't have to do it on Monday. You could do it Tuesday. I've Wednesday. always wondered how much, how many, if I could equate calories to the amount of time someone thinks or spends something, I oh. mean, you would be at such a deficit. It's just ungodly how many yeah. scenarios you spin through before making kind of, because I remember I would say that in the emails, I would be like, like, like I can't get these, I, I can't get these minutes back. Like I, I'm trying so hard to, and then they would just kind of just come all the way around it. Oh, so love yeah, because I was always asking, but why do I do that? Why do I, I mean, I'm trying to figure out why I have such a problem doing these exercises every morning and every night. I mean, I know they don't take long, but I don't want to do them. And you would say, just do them. I was like, but I really don't want to. And every time I'm supposed to be doing it, I'm thinking, I don't want to do it. Right. Yeah. And, and I would get stuck right there. I, yeah. Well, why is it, why is it such a problem for me? I mean, is it the exercise? Is it the time of day? Is it because Peggy told me to do it? You know, really over analyzing it. And then I'd be like, well, it's lunchtime. I can't really do them. In the morning oh now. gosh, I know. I know. <laughs> we had so many conversations about, you know, whether, you know, is it procrastination, Elaine, you know, and you'd come back and you'd go, well, I don't think it's procrastination. I think it's motivation. And I'd be like, okay, well, what's not motivating? Well, I don't know what's motivating. I mean, it would be go through organization and just all these different yeah. things, which not, not demeaning the fact that we all want to try to figure out the whys. I think it's the amount of time that we had a relationship together that it started to really unfold where I was like, this chick is a full blown rebel. So I want to explain to you guys the difference of the four tendencies. So the first one is upholder. An upholder, the best way I can describe it is kind of the hoop jumper, the gold star, the person who can motivate themselves and stay committed to their own goals. The downside of an upholder is they often tend to get so tunnel vision that they can get injured or sick and kind of not see it coming along. The one of the next ones is an obliger. An obliger, when I think of that, I usually think of my nurses and my moms, my at-home moms, where it's they will do wellness or they'll do things for themselves as long as it's for someone else as well. They usually don't keep their own boundaries for themselves, and then they're ticked off after. And obligers, they really, really struggle with keeping their weight off or staying healthy because it's all about everybody else. Then there's a questioner. The questioner is like, I need to see the white paper. Why are we doing this? I need to know all of these things before I make a decision to do anything. Well, that doesn't always work with my industry because lots of times we're telling people to just do it because we need to know what falls out. 
So hold tight because Elaine is a question or two. So then the last one is the rebel. So the rebel is somebody who just, they're the wild west. They buck everything. They even buck themselves, you guys. So they'll set up, they really almost set themselves up to fail sometimes. I remember a rebel that came to me years ago and said, I just want you to know I've had seven trainers and all of them. And I'm just going, oh, geez, here he is. <laughs> Which tells you right there that, you know, it's what's the commonality? It's right. It's them, right. Okay, you guys, we're going to go to a quick commercial. We're going to come back and talk to Lane a lot more about being a rebel and kind of working through some of the things we have in our relationship and where she are, is with her wellness right now. So make sure you come on back for the after party and you are listening to Coach Couch and Coffee with Coach Peggy. See you soon. Thank you for listening to Coach Couch and Coffee Radio with me, Coach Peggy Wells. Did you hear something that made you go, hmm, or have an aha moment? I live for those. If not, we will get you next time. I will be back every first and third Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific. The tough love you to become smarter, stronger, braver, healthier, and happier. Duh. I will be back with a barrel of positivity, and you never know when a guest might pop in. There is no time for excuses. So don't forget to bring your coffee and an open mind as we talk all things wellness on Coach Couch and Coffee Radio with me, Coach Peggy Wells. Now go grab a ray of sunshine.